welcome to Funky Pharaoh's Spring Break Adventure. Over the next three days, we're going to be heading back in time to visit ancient Egypt, a fascinating civilization that started 5,000 years ago and lasted almost 3,000 years. Are you ready? Then let's go. The Egyptian broad collar was the most famous piece of Egyptian jewelry. These were made out of sheets of gold, silver, bronze, or they could be made out of conical beads that were strung together in up to five different rows. Sometimes these were embellished with glass beads or gems, depending on your level of society. So what you need out of your craft kit is your Egyptian collar. Uh, yours will be in silver, gold, or bronze. You can get a little bit of glue from your craft kit. This is a really nice uh, tacky glue. It sets up very fast. Uh, you can use the little paintbrush that's in your craft kit to apply the glue, or you can use a brush from home, and then you're going to take your pasta and you can pour it out into a small bowl like this. What you'll need in addition to these things from home is uh, two or three different colors of crafters acrylic that you can get from your local dollar store. You're going to need a small paintbrush for painting and if you'd like you can just get a couple of small containers to pour the paint out in. So let's get started. I'm going to start by just taking the lid off of this tacky glue. Now with Egyptian collars um, they were sometimes beaded, they were sometimes um, fashioned out of sheets of metal, like gold, uh, bronze, and in the rare case, silver. And a lot of the patterns were rows of conical beads, up to five rows. But we can get really creative with our craft and we can pretty much put any design we want on there. So when you pick up each piece of pasta, you wanna make sure that you put a lot of glue on that surface. If you don't get enough glue on the pasta, when it dries, it's just going to pop right off. And we don't want that happening, so I'm going to just start like this. Now you can make your design as intricate and complex or as simple as you'd like. So we're just continuing, continuing to work with this wide collar, broad collar, and just uh, gluing on that pasta. Again, just making sure that you have enough glue on each piece of pasta so that when it dries, it will stay on your collar. Your fingers are going to get very sticky with glue when you are doing this craft, so you may need to wash your hands a few times. Okay, so my broad collar has been drying for at least 30 minutes. I think that pasta is nice and secure on that collar, so I'm ready to start painting. I've chosen two colors, but you can also go with a third color if you choose. So we're going to take a small brush and we're just going to dip it in that paint and just paint. If a little bit gets on the card stuck underneath, you can just wipe it off with your finger before it dries. And now for my second color. So you can see that I've created uh, an alternating pattern of two colors on this uh, broad collar, uh, but I've only put one coat on, and so the color doesn't look very solid. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and I'm going to paint over with the second coat to give us a more solid color. Okay, so this is my broad color, color after the second coat of paint. You can see that the color is much more solid and I have one that I've made earlier and this one has a different pattern and you can see that I've embellished this one with sticky gems from the dollar store. So there you have it, two broad collars that look regal enough to be worn by any pharaoh.
The Mouse Who Saved Egypt by Kareem al Rawi and published by Tradewind Books. One evening, a young Egyptian prince saw a mouse caught in the thorns of a bush. Please, kind sir, help me, the mouse squeaked. If you don't, the jackals will surely eat me. The prince felt sorry for the mouse and set him free. True greatness is being kind, and true kindness is never forgotten, said the mouse, scurrying away across the sand. The young prince dreamed that the sun god spoke to him. I, Amun-Ra, give life to this land, yet my image lies buried deep in the sand. Neglected, forgotten, banished from sight, I'll make him Pharaoh who brings it to light. When the prince awoke, he realized what the sun god's words meant. On returning to the palace, the young prince ordered his workmen to clear away the sand around the great rock. Toiling day and night, they uncovered a giant stone sphinx, part man and part lion, the sacred image of the sun god Ra. When the old pharaoh died, the high priest sent for the prince. For every sun that sets, a new sun rises, he said. It is the sun god's wish that you be crowned lord of the land. That very day, the prince was made pharaoh. The young pharaoh ruled kindly, always mindful of the sun god's blessings. The country prospered and the mice ate well. One day, a messenger came to court. A great army of mountain men is camped in the desert ready to attack, he said. The sun god answered the pharaoh's prayers. Every kind act is a seed sown, aiding others with their troubles, reaps help with one's own. The little mouse hurried to his friends. The kind man who rescued me from the thorns needs our help, he said. Thousands of mice set off across the desert. While the mountain men slept, the mice chewed through the leather of their bows, their saddles, and the straps of their shields. In the morning, the mountain men could not tie their sandals and their clothes fell off. They could not saddle their horses, nor lift their shields, nor draw their bows. When they saw the pharaoh leading his soldiers, they fled. At the foot of the Sphinx, the young pharaoh built a temple to the sun god. Inside, he placed a golden mouse to remind the people of Egypt that every act of kindness is rewarded, though sometimes in unexpected ways. The End